Hi, we're just going to talk about functions versus stored procedures in SQL Server. So, in our SQL Server, we not only store tables of data, we also store groups of SQL commands, and we place them into functions and stored procedures. They both look very similar in that they allow you to create chunks of SQL statements, and they're both stored on the server for future use. And this allows you a real efficiency benefit because you can save programming time by reusing the code from one program to another. And this cuts down on your program development code time. It also hides the SQL details for common tasks. And it also centralizes your maintenance, allowing you to make business logic changes in a single area, and which will automatically affect all other stored procedures or functions. But there are several subtle differences between the two. So if we go on to a basic difference, functions can be called from procedures, whereas procedures cannot be called from functions. Procedures allow select as well as the various DML statements, such as the insert, update and delete, whereas functions are only allowed to use select statements. Functions must return a value, but in a stored procedure, it's optional. Procedures can return zero or a number of values. And that's a very good question that uh, you'll often see a measure of. Functions can take one input parameter and it's mandatory that they have an input parameter, whereas stored procedures can take either none or many input parameters. So if you can think of a stored procedure like a standalone program, and you can call functions from within the stored procedure. The functions are restricted, as we said before, to select only, select statements only. And they're like methods if you were doing the programming MTA version. They're like method calls, um, but they're less powerful than methods in C-sharp. And as we said before, you cannot call a stored procedure within an SQL statement. You have to uh, start a stored procedure using the exe command, and I'll show you that later. Whereas the functions can be called from within SQL statements. You can use functions to make your SQL uh, commands less complicated. For example, the functions can return data, which then we, you can use in another part of your SQL statement. And there are also inbuilt functions for Microsoft's SQL Server. And this example below returns the date using the syntax date part, which I've outlined in orange. And this date part function is used to return a single part of a date time, such as your year, date, hour, minute, etc. So let's have a look at an, an example of a stored procedures and functions. So we'll do function first. So an example of a function, how it's used inside an SQL statement. So this is an example of, first of all, how we would create a function, again, it kind of looks like a method call. You uh, give it a name. It takes two parameters. And it returns a parameter of a type varchar. And when we start the function, so that's the method uh, name at the start, which is just giving it the name and the parameters that you pass in and what it returns. And then to actually uh, get to uh, give the function a command, we do an as and an end, and inside here we go begin. And what we're returning is the first name and the last name. So that really doesn't do that much, that statement, it's just something basic, just to show you how to create a function. So now, if we wanted to call that function from within an SQL statement, we use this line down here. So we are going to select the first and last names from employee. Now you could do this as a normal SQL statement. All we want to show you is a very basic way on how to call a function 
from within an SQL statement. So we do a select first name, last name as name, salary from employee. So that's just an, in a, a very basic example of calling a function from within an SQL statement. Okay, let's have a look at store procedure. Okay, as I said before, you can't call a stored procedure for from within an SQL statement. How you actually execute it is you use the exe command. So let's just have a look at a stored procedure. This is a very basic one. So what I'm saying at the start, I'm choosing the database that I'm going to run on. I'm creating the name of the stored procedure, human resources, uh, get employee test tree. I'm passing in the variables, so it's going to actually take two variables. And then this is the part, this is where you're doing your code. So we say as, and then this is your, your chunk of SQL statement. Uh, set, no count on, select first name from, so it's just literally a, se uh, a select statement. Okay, so then to call the stored procedure, we use the term execute, so it's, it is like a little program, execute the name of the stored procedure and then there we are, we're passing in those two variables. So it can take either no parameters or you can pass in multiple parameters. So in this case we have one, two parameters we've passed in when we've called the stored procedure. So they are quite different. If you want a bit more information on this, I have provided a link so you can see the differences between the two. Okay, thank you.